This next video is going to help you to be able to calculate out your RPMs when you're running for your mile and a half. This has three different levels of calculations that you're going to be able to do. The first calculation is for your minimum PST time, and that's a real confidence builder. If you know how fast you have to run in order just to pass the minimum, when you're in boot camp and you only get like two hours sleep and you have to go out there and do a PST, a lot of guys, when they do the run, they just run as hard as they possibly can because they haven't calculated out their RPMs. So they have to guess in order to be able to pass the PST how fast they're going to run. So if you take out all the guesswork, you're going to have a much better time and a lot more confidence when it comes to doing your PST. So these paces that we're going to acquire are revolutions per minute. Every time the right foot hits the ground is one revolution per minute. A lot of runners in high school and collegiate running and other clubs, they refer to RPMs as turnover rate. It's the same thing. So as you're counting for one minute, every time the same foot hits the ground, that is one revolution per minute. And the way you're going to use this revolutions per minute is you're going to calculate out three different times for your PST. The first time that you're going to calculate is your minimum PST score what baseline you need just to be able to pass a PST. That, that one there is the real confidence builder. The second one you're going to do for a calculation is your current run time. Whatever you're running at now, you're going to calculate that out too so you know your RPMs. And the third one is your desired RPM for your PST time, a desired time for a PST. So we're going to take and uh, calculate out the first one for your minimum time. And then you'll do the same exact thing for your current race pace and for the pace that you would like to get on future PSTs. So the steps and procedures are as followed. You might want to grab a pen and paper for this. As a matter of fact, pause the video and make sure you got something to write on. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take the PST time for a minimum for SEAL. It's 10 minutes and 30 seconds. So you will take the 10 minutes you're going to times that by 60, add the remaining 30 seconds. Now you have 630 seconds. Then you're going to take the amount of laps on the track. And that's another thing you might run into too. Various distances, various tracks that you have to run on. If you're used to doing a PST and you're always running on a six lap track for a mile and a half, and now you go somewhere else and you got to run on a track that's 24 laps, you're not going to know exactly how fast per lap you're going to have to run as far as RPMs go to you know acquire your race pace. So let's say you are running, there's only two ways you can increase your speed on running. You could either lengthen your stride or increase your RPMs. Now as you're running, if you start feeling uh, sore, weak, tired, sorry for yourself, whatever the case might be, you only want to alter one of those. You want to have a, cons a consistent stride, for example. So you, you need a constant. Make it your stride. So then you could adjust your RPMs accordingly. So if your RPMs fall below your calculated RPM rate, you know you're going to be running slower than what you need to be able to pass the PST. So you'll have to step it up. So if you do get a side cramp or anything like that when you're running, you have to analyze your body from head to toe, figure out what the problem is, and then get back into your RPMs. So again, let's take a 24-lap track. You're going to take 600 seconds plus the 30 seconds, so 630 seconds, divide that by the number of laps, and we're using 24 for all our equations today, a 24 lap track, which gives you 26 seconds that you have to run per lap. Now, if you're running a eight something, nine something run, that's gonna be pretty slow. So what you have to do is take your stopwatch, run one lap, and try to get it down as slow as the 26 seconds. Once you acquire that, and you have the feel for it, and you know what that feels like, now run multiple laps so that you can have a distance of over one minute so that you can start your watch at the one minute mark utilizing the acquired pace that you now have and count your RPMs for one minute. Do that multiple times, at least three times. So you could add all three of the times together or a number of laps together and then you could divide that by three, the number of times that you did the test. And that will give you your average RPMs that you're going to use to run in order to get the minimum 
of a 10 minute and 30 second or baseline passing rate for your PST. Now what you're going to do is run several laps and try to acquire the feel again for the 26 seconds per lap. And then as you're running, you're going to test out your RPMs by starting your stopwatch now that you have your pace and try to maintain those RPMs. By mastering this, you're going to know, say it was 72. You know that if you're running 72 RPMs or 72 revolutions per minute, that you're going to pass that PST. Now, you do the same calculation for your current race pace. Say your current race pace was 10 minutes. So you'll take 10 minutes times that by 60, gives you 600, and you divide that by the number of laps, which is 24. That gives you 25 seconds. That's only one second slower than what you were doing for the, I'm sorry, one second faster than what you were doing for the minimum. You know, one second per lap, that doesn't seem like much, but actually it is when you're doing, you know, a high number of reps like that or a high number of laps. So you want to calculate that out the same way. You're going to run single laps at that speed, and you know you can do it because that's your normal speed that you run it at. And once you have your speed, you know, down to muscle memory, once it feels good, now you're going to run multiple laps and do your one-minute intervals and acquire your RPMs. Once you have that, you know that when you're doing your normal race pace, you have to maintain at least that minimum RPMs just to be able to maintain that race pace that you've already acquired during previous PSTs. Now the last one, the last calculation is for your desired PST time. Let's say you want to knock off 15 seconds off your time. So you're going to go from a 10 to a 945. So you're going to take 9 minutes times that by 60, gives you 540. Take the remaining 45 seconds, add that to it. Now you are going to have 585 seconds. Divide that by 24 and that's going to give you actually 24.375 seconds. Now you're not going to calculate it out and run 24.375 seconds. Your watch isn't that accurate in most cases. So round that down to 24 seconds per lap. Now, you're not going to be able to just start running at 24 seconds per lap and knock off 15 seconds instantaneously in most cases. It's going to take some work. So what you're going to do is you're going to run at one lap at a time, take as much break as you need to so you can maintain that speed per lap. Once you have that acquired, again, now you're going to have to try to figure out your RPMs. So you have to run more in most cases than one lap to be able to run for a total of one minute, counting your RPMs. Repeat the process three times, add them together, get an average, and now you know your RPMs for that particular speed that you want to acquire. So now you're going to run one lap at a time trying to maintain those RPMs. Or you could just use your stopwatch and try to maintain it on the stopwatch either way. But it's really good to know what the RPMs are for when you acquire that speed. Then you're going to take and you're going to do one of two things. You're going to do a lap and then take a break. Do another lap, take a break. Do another lap, take a break. Now what you can do is take less breaks in between each lap. Or start running two laps at a time. Take a break. And then eventually three laps at a time, take a break, until eventually you're working your way up to doing that mile and a half again. Now this works in conjunction with the rest of the running program. So you still have to do your long, slow distance runs, your interval training, and your race pace. Everything that's on, on the website, go to the website if you have any questions. Email me, I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you do have. Plug this in, it really works, and happy running.